Hi everyone, welcome today to Indian Story Read Along. Uh, today's story is going to be called The Golden Antelope and it is from Jataka Tales. Jataka Tales are a collection of animal stories, um, but it's all like animals acting like humans. Uh, it's also animals interacting with humans. Uh, because a long time ago it was believed that animals, when we humans had the ability to communicate better with nature and it was a different yuga, it was a different time um, where like I don't know, hundreds of thousands of years ago I suppose different yugas meaning that it was probably when we had more abilities than we do today in, in mo this modern world right now um, so we were much more in touch with nature and nature was much more in touch with us so it was believed that we could communicate with animals, they could communicate with us, um, and everyone was uh, much more in sync. So we'll see a lot in these stories that there is no modern stuff like cell phones, cars. Um, this isn't even from a hundred or two hundred years ago. This is probably from thousands of years ago, these stories. So you'll see that it's all in times of kings and queens, um, and people's jobs were being hunters or weavers or shoemakers. Those were the only jobs. Like there was no IT professional back then. So this is the golden antelope. Um, and you'll see that there is a hunter, gardener, kings, and antelopes. Long ago, there lived a king in Varanasi who had a gardener named Sanjaya. Every day, an antelope came to graze in the royal garden. So Sanjaya is, has that little sickle machete right there, right? So he's cutting flowers for the king. And he sees that antelope, he thinks, oh, poor antelope. Every time he sees me, he runs away in fright. And that's what deer and antelope do. They see the hint of a human, they will run. After some time, the antelope became accustomed to seeing Sanjaya about and stopped running away. One day, while he was taking fruit and flowers to the palace, the king stopped him. Have you noticed anything strange in the garden, Sanjaya? So this isn't actually the forest. This is just nearby the king's palace. Sanjaya says, nothing, your majesty, except that a wild antelope comes to graze here from time to time. And the king says, do you think you could catch him? And Sanjaya is like, oh, yes. If I had a little honey, I would bring him right into your palace. So some things never change. Humans are back then even trying to capture animals, although they don't want to eat them or use them for food or some kind of necessity just to kind of have them. Uh, so King is also like this too. The King ordered some honey to be given to Sanjaya. And he's thinking, he goes out into the garden, I shall coat the grass where he grazes with honey, then hide myself and see what happens. Along came the antelope. And he's thinking, hmm, this grass tastes exceptionally sweet today. And then Sanjaya is watching, watching him eat, thinking, so my plan has worked. Now for the second stage. <laughs> The antelope was so snared by the taste of the sweetened grass, he would eat nowhere else. So that was part two of the plan. He wanted to make sure that the antelope uh, was kind of just stuck to this one place. He wouldn't go anywhere else. Now, hmm, Sanjay is thinking, now to show myself gradually. At first, the antelope was startled at the appearance of Sanjay. Huh? He's thinking, oh, there's a human. But he has a little tuft of grass in there, <laughs> in his hand. But soon he was eating the sweet grass that Sanjaya offered him. Ah, there they are, eating grass together. Now I must lead him toward the palace, Sanjaya's thinking. So, I mean, gradually, he doesn't, I don't think he does it all in one shot, but he stands up has a bunch of grass in his hand, hands it to the antelope little by little, they go on a bit of a walk, and then he's like, all right, he hasn't even noticed that we are near the palace. That antelope is just eating the grass, eating away, walking with him. Once he was inside the palace, Sanjaya quickly shut the door 
At the sight of so many men and knowing that he was trapped, the antelope began trembling with fright and dashed to and fro. Poor thing, he must have been terrified. When the king came down from his chamber and saw the antelope, he felt sorry for it. Well, I mean, you can't really say Sanji has the bad guy here. If he told the king earlier on, uh, king, that would be cruel to capture this antelope for you just because you want it, then Sanjaya's head would have been on the floor. So uh, I think that he was really just doing his job and he had to do it. The king asked him to do what he had to. So the king was the one who made the mistake in asking someone to do something that was wrong. And I think he's realizing his mistake now. He says, antelopes are so timid that they never revisit a place for at least a week if they have seen a man there. Sometimes they never go back again. This antelope was carried away by the taste of the sweetened grass and forgot himself. Surely there is nothing viler in the world than the lust of taste. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> I have to disagree here. I, I think that by capturing a creature who doesn't know as much as you and taking advantage of that, that's probably worse than a creature eating what it wants. So the king is kind of turning this around on the antelope not really showing much integrity at all. And uh, so I disagree, but the king says, there is nothing viler in the world than the lust of taste. You have taught us a valuable lesson. So he takes the antelope, he sends it out and says, go my friend, you are free to go wherever you please. I don't know about this one. I mean, I like it, but I know that they were trying the whole message in this story, even though they don't have a moral at the end, uh, it is this. There's nothing viler in the world than the lust of taste. I think there's a lot of worse things than that, than eating what you want, like especially if you're a wild animal. There might have been a better way to kind of show that message. Um, but this is, I mean, I like it when, when my kids do this and I hope that you're doing it too, that you're thinking about the stuff that you're reading. Like, cause at the end, this king did take advantage of this poor animal that was just kind of minding its own business and eating the grass until they kind of interfered with his life. So um, there are other stories like this, more deer stories and antelope stories. I will read those for you next time on Indian Story Read Along. All right, join us then.